In this video, let's take one last look at position time graphs and see what they can tell us about the movement of objects. We know that position time graphs tell us something about the velocity uh, of an object because velocity is the rate of change of position of an object over time. And so the units of velocity, if we look at this, uh, velocity could mean for us then units of velocity. Change in position could be like meters per second. And in this video, we're going to take a look at when it can tell us about acceleration. Because in a position time graph, we're looking at a rate of change in meters per second. But what about if this rate of change is changing over time? Well, I think we've seen in, in previous videos that meters per second per second is the same thing as meters per second squared, which is acceleration. So let's, uh, let's turn the page and take a look at what that could, could mean for us. All right, so let's use our same scenario that we've had where we've got a, a car and we're at our house, maybe on, uh, I think we were on East 9th Street, and we leave our house and we want to travel to our friend's house that's on West 9th Street. <clears throat> now, previously we, we drew a graph, and I'm going to throw this up there just, uh, just for illustration. We, we drew a graph where we started at our house number and we traveled at a constant leftward velocity, which, so that's why we had a negative slope. We stayed at our friend's house for some period of time and then we turned around and we drove home. And that's one of the graphs we looked at in, in a previous video. And although that basic shape is still true, there are some parts there that we need to look at. This slope is a constant rate of change, so it could be whatever you want it to be. Maybe in this instance it was 25 miles per, per hour that we drove down the street. That'd be a reasonable velocity. But when we leave the house, did you go from 0 to 25 instantaneously? And then did you drive down the street at 25 miles per hour, never speeding up and never slowing down? Uh, what about when you cross commercial? I hope you slowed down and looked both ways. This indicates that you didn't, that you just kept moving at 25 miles an hour as you crossed Commercial Avenue. And then when you got to your friend's house, you went from 25 miles an hour to zero instantaneously. I bet you left skid marks, all right? Uh, leaving, you did the same thing. You left instantaneously. You never slowed down when you crossed commercial and then you came to an immediate stop when you got home. Those sorts of things are just not true. That's, that's not how it works in, in real life. So let's back up for a minute then and, and see what, uh, see what the, our motion might have actually looked like. Alright, so when we leave the house and, and we get in our car and we start to move towards our friend's house, we all know that we're sitting at zero miles per hour and then that we accelerate. Well, our change in position then when we get in our car and start it up then is a straight line of zero slope because we're not changing position. And then, I'm going to exaggerate this, then look what happens. We go from zero slope to some negative slope over time, right? So there's some negative acceleration as we start going moving to the left, right? And then we reach some constant velocity, right? Oop, let's go back and get the, the same color here. So we reach some constant velocity. Maybe again it was at 25 miles an hour. But I hope as we reach approach commercial, you see we got a stop sign there, all right? And so then we're going to need to slow down. Well, our rate of change is steep and we're going to stop at the stop sign. So the shape we are going to have is, is, is this, this curve. So we're going to slow down and we're going to stop. So see so we have zero slope. We're going to look both ways. And then once again we have to accelerate to go down the street. We're going to reach some constant velocity. When we get close to our friend's house then once again we have to slow down. So we're going to have a curve there. All right, then we stay at our friend's house for some period of time. I see, I hope this is starting to make some sense. We get in our car and we are zero and then we have to speed up. Great. Moving back toward commercial, we have that stop sign coming from the other direction. 
So we, we slow down and we stop, all right? And after we've stopped her, then we accelerate, moving back in a positive slope towards our house. And when we get to our house, then we have to slow down until finally our rate of change is zero again. And so what the main point of this video, if you look at it then, is to recognize that there are different places uh, in different times whenever we have slopes that, and, that, are, that are curves. The, these areas on our graph that are, if you see a curve on a position time graph, I hope you're writing this down. If you see a curve on a position time graph, these are indications of acceleration 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 is when you see a curve on a position time graph all right so then the if you look at the shapes of the curves if you draw this this diagram or, or this uh, rather this graph in your uh, in your notes you can take a look at the the relative curvatures to see if they're positive or negative and whether you're speeding up or slowing down so there you go. Curves on a position time graph are indications of acceleration because it's a rate of change of velocity there. So good. That'll wrap this up then.